That night, Mansum throws a party to entertain everyone. He is a drinker, so his menu is full of dishes cooked with alcohol. Massim invites reporter Tina to the party, but it seems that Rin doesn't like her. When they finished eating, Mansum remembers that they have forgotten that they need to hunt the regal mammoth. However, Rin reveals that her older brother, Sunny, has caught one. Toriko and the others go out to wait for Sunny to bring the mammoth here and eat some more meat in the meantime. But when everyone sees Sunny lift a giant mammoth with just one hand, they are surprised. The other beasts that are about to attack Sunny fall to the floor immediately for no reason. Sunny throws the regal mammoth at everyone, causing Mansum to struggle to catch it. Sunny is one of the four heavenly kings and he only likes pretty things, so Sunny scolds Rin when he notices that his sister seems to be gaining weight these days. However, Massim says that the regal mammoth that Sunny has just hunted is just a baby mammoth, leaving everyone dumbfounded. They couldn't imagine how big the mother mammoth will be when the baby mammoth is this big. Meanwhile, Sue's chef Starjan of the Gourmet Corp. Bishop Yukai is planning to hunt the mother mammoth. He sends a few underlings driving GT robots to break into Mansum's garden. Toriko and the others go to a place called Black Carpet, a field of black grass. Sunny wonders what Kamatsu eats every day that makes his face look so ugly. Sunny says his menu is full of scrumptious dishes that are good for women's skin. Right after that, a group of rock drums with level 27 suddenly came to attack everyone. Toriko rushes to fight them because their meat is extremely delicious. Sunny refuses to fight because he doesn't like eating ugly things. However, when he sees Rin being chased by a rock drum, Sunny is forced to blow it away to save her. Sunny wants to take the shells of the rock drums because their shells can make extremely beautiful furniture. Sunny has micro sensor antennas in his hair, and those antennas are so durable that they can help him lift a giant baby mammoth like before. He can even turn them into a shield against the opponent's attack. Meanwhile, Mansum is taking the baby mammoth to the laboratory when he suddenly receives news that the Bishokukai organization is attacking this garden. Toriko's group misses a rock drum, so it goes back to kicking the group one by one. Sunny and Kamatsu are kicked to a giant ice cream forest, and Kamatsu is delighted when he sees a swarm of squid that can spray soy sauce here. Sunny finds these squids really disgusting. Toriko and Rin are kicked to the same place, so Rin is happy to be alone with Toriko. But where they fell is a forest full of beasts. Tina and Terry weren't kicked by the rock drum. Tina suddenly sees a black robot piloted by Starjan walking past her. Terry senses danger, so he carries Tina on his back and runs to find Toriko. Toriko and Jin are surrounded by beasts, so Toriko asks Rin to spray battle fragrance on him. After being stimulated by the battle fragrance, his murderous aura increases several times, causing the beasts to run away in panic. However, Rin feels a bit regretful for not adding more fragrance to let him do it with her. Kamatsu grills the mushrooms and then sprays some soy sauce from the squid to make delicious grilled mushrooms while Sunny found the dish really disgusting. But he still appreciates the chafe Kamatsu for the way he cooks, which is so beautiful. Masum brings the baby mammoth back to headquarters to get jewel meat. Jewel meat is the most delicious piece of meat inside the mammoth's body. A robot of the Bishop Yukai is slaughtering beasts in the garden but he is crushed by the mother mammoth while she is searching for her child. Tomatsu and Sunny encounter a swamp, so Sunny uses the antennas to bring them to the other side. They suddenly see the corpse of a beast that has just been murdered by the Bishokukai. Sunny knows that the Bishokukai hunt for food over the world to find gourmet cells because humans will have superpowers if they are transplanted with gourmet cells. Mansum and the four heavenly kings were also transplanted with gourmet cells. At this moment, Toriko encounters a level 28 lizard. He fights with it until they are both exhausted, but Toriko still manages to subdue the lizard and make it his mount. On the way to the mammoth's residence, Toriko and Rin meet cliffs called Devil's Playground. This place is a racetrack filled with very ferocious beasts built by the International Gourmet Organization. Toriko is now exhausted from hunger, so he will have to find a safe route to go. Like Toriko's group, Sunny and Kamatsu are also heading to the mammoth habitat. They panic when they see the huge footprints of a certain creature. That footprint is of a giant pink robot controlled by a guy named Gaido. Meanwhile, Toriko's party encounters a beast known as the mystery bird Rubanda. Toriko's lizard rushes to attack it but is caught by its breath and falls into the cliff. This monstrous bird is capable of moving at an extremely fast speed, so it can create afterimages that make it impossible for Toriko to locate it. Toriko is then beaten up by the bird, but fortunately, Terry is able to jump in time to kick the bird and save Toriko. Toriko is overjoyed to hear that Terry and Tina are safe. The bird recognizes the battle wolf blood in Terry, so the bird panics and stands still to let Toriko's group continue forward. Thanks to Terry's keen sense of smell, 
Everyone is able to easily escape Devil's Playground without encountering a single monster. But Terry suddenly senses the presence of Starjun, whom Toriko met at the Puffer Whale Cavern. Terry immediately chases after Starjun. Although Toriko knows that Terry is chasing a very dangerous person, Toriko and the others still prioritize finding the mammoth. Meanwhile, Sunny is pulling Komatsu up a towering mountaintop. At the top of that mountain, Gaido is trying to attack the mammoth, but his attacks are like scratching an itch for this huge monster. The mammoth sucks all the creatures into its trunk and then spits out their bones after eating their meat. Immediately after that, the mammoth frantically rushes down the cliff to find its child. Sunny and Komatsu are gently climbing over the nest of the heavy cliffs. However, they were horrified when they see the mammoth's massive body falling. Toriko and the two girls also run here and see the mother mammoth fall from the mountain. The heavy cliffs attack Sunny and Komatsu, thinking they are attacking their lair. Sunny has to hurry to drag Komatsu down the mountain. Seeing that Sunny and Komatsu are in danger, Toriko slashes the ground into a square and then scoops up a large chunk of dirt with his hand to create a hiding place for everyone. Sunny and Komatsu jump into the hole with Toriko's group before the mammoth can touch them. The mammoth leaves a huge crater after falling to the ground. Everyone is lucky to survive thanks to Toriko and Sunny's shield. They estimate the size of a mammoth to be the size of a mountain. The heavy cliffs also survive the mammoth's fall because their bodies can become rock hard when curled up. They rush to attack Toriko's group, thinking they are the ones who destroyed their nest. However, the heavy cliffs are suddenly poisoned. They discover that Coco is the one who used paralysis poison to defeat the heavy cliffs. Sunny notices that Coco has chosen the right timing to create an impeccably beautiful save. But when Coco walks over to shake Sunny's hand, he refuses because Coco's body is all poison. Coco also put anesthetic on the mammoth to immobilize it for a while. He also discovers that a robot of the Bishokukai has entered the mammoth to find the jewel meat. Komatsu also wants to see the jewel meat with his own eyes, and everyone is making their way inside the mammoth when the giant pink robot lands on them. Meanwhile, Starjun is still finding his way out of the Devil's Playground. He accidentally sees Toriko's stupid lizard, and tames it. Knowing that everyone is exhausted, Koko tells them to leave Gaido to him. Koko calls his bird to aid him in fighting Gaido. Toriko's group is thinking of a way to get inside the mammoth when suddenly they are sucked inside. Koko panics when he sees the death god haunting one of them. Toriko and the others then fall into the mammoth's mouth, and they realize they are standing right on top of one of its huge teeth. The mammoth's two teeth are about to crush them, but Toriko and Sunny caught it and jump out of the teeth before it closes, and they fall into its esophagus. Outside, the battle between Koko and Gaido is still going on very fiercely. Koko freezes his poison and creates a poison sword to attack Gaido, but Gaido's skin is too strong for his attack to work. Toriko's group falls into the mammoth's intestines, and they accidentally encounter a blue robot, who is looking for jewel meat in this place, but the mammoth's intestines are as wide as a maze that prevents him from finding it. Sunny tells the group to go find jewel meat while he holds off this robot, but in fact, Sunny is afraid of dirt, so he doesn't like to go deeper inside. Toriko believes that Sunny will definitely win because he knows Sunny is extremely strong. The blue robot shoots energy beams at Sunny but is blocked by his hair. Sunny's hair turns into a monster, much to the blue robot's horror. Terry has now gone to Starjun's place to confront Starjun. Terry foresees Starjun's attack, so it jumps back. However, Starjun doesn't want to waste time with Terry because he still has to find jewel meat. He orders Toriko's lizard, which he tamed earlier, to fight Terry. Meanwhile, the match between Coco and Gaido is not over yet. When Gaido is about to shoot a laser from inside his head, Coco also jumps down and shoots a poison beam at him. But Gaido successfully shoots the laser at Coco and kicks him to the ground. Facing this dangerous situation, Coco decides that he will use all his strength to fight. Coco releases a very dense, toxic mist that surrounds Gaido. But Gaido says that this robot is remote controlled by him, so Coco's poison will have no effect. Right after that, Gaido creates a huge explosion to blow away Coco's poisonous mist. But when Gaido fires a laser to finish Coco, he misses despite being at very close range. Gaido's robot suddenly collapses and can no longer be controlled. It turns out that Coco has poisoned the robot and corroded its control core. Gaido can no longer control this robot, so the winner is Coco. But when Coco is resting, Starjun comes, making him look very alarmed. After examining the baby mammoth, Mansum discovers that it still doesn't have jewel meat because it is so young, so he hopes that Toriko's group will find it. Starjun ignores Coco and rushes inside the mammoth's body. 
Toko sees that one of his friends will die there. Meanwhile, Toriko's group is looking for jewel meat when Kamatsu suddenly sees an orange tree. He even found other rare spices. But Toriko realizes that someone has just entered the mammoth's body. The blue robot tries to keep a distance to avoid Sunny's hair and attacks him from a distance. The robot realizes that Sunny will soon be exhausted if he has to block his attacks continuously. Right after that, the robot sits down and waits until Sunny's defense is weak. The robot takes out a collection of the beast size, much to Sunny's disgust. After looking at the collection, the robot calls out a beast full of tentacles. The monster is about to attack Sunny, but Sunny releases dozens of blades to push it away. But the robot takes the initiative to punch Sunny in the face, as he sees that he seems to be exhausted. While searching for jewel meat, Kamatsu and Tina discuss gourmet cells. Tina learns that the person who found the gourmet cells is Acacia, known as the gourmet god. He had tasted all the best food in the world. On one occasion, he found a fish with incomparably delicious meat. After researching, Acacia discovered that the fish's meat was so delicious because it ate a jellyfish in the sea. After eating the jellyfish, the creatures will evolve. Acacia collected the jellyfish's cells and named them gourmet cells. The blue robot repeatedly punches Sunny in the face, but Sunny is just pretending to be weak to lure him closer to him. Sunny's hair suddenly turns into a monster, and he punches the blue robot. However, the robot is still able to move, so he tries to run away, but Sunny sneaks his hair into the robot's body to destroy the control core. After Sunny defeats the blue robot, the mammoth suddenly blows him out. Coco orders his bird to catch Sunny. Coco and Sunny are both exhausted, so they have to sit out here eating fruit while waiting for the rest. The closer Toriko and the others run to jewel meat, the brighter the path becomes, but Toriko suddenly sees Starjun here, so he frantically rushes to attack him. However, Starjan only punches him lightly, making him be blown away and passed out. Rin is about to shoot smoke to help everyone escape, but Starjan punches her. Despite being seriously injured, Rin still tries to spray smoke to save everyone. Tina and her bird try to run outside to call Sunny and Coco for help. Starjan is about to attack Kamatsu when Toriko suddenly stands up and punches him. Rin feels that she may not be able to survive because her injuries are too severe, so Rin asks Toriko to kiss her to satisfy her cravings before she dies. After that kiss, Rin stops breathing. Toriko is enraged and rushes to attack Starjun. However, Starjun remains unscathed, and he realizes that Toriko is wearing down his own body so he can continue fighting. Starjun says that people who receive gourmet cells often have to consume tons of food to get energy. Toriko has been starving all day, so he is currently refueling by eating his own cells to continue fighting. He still tries to fight despite knowing full well that he is surpassing his endurance. After only a while of fierce fighting, Toriko is exhausted, unable to lift his arms anymore, so Starjun fires a powerful laser to push Toriko to fly to Tina. Tina then tries to wake Toriko but still doesn't see him move. She suddenly sees golden drops of water flowing from somewhere as bright as the sun. When she tries to put a few drops of that water in Toriko's mouth, he wakes up. They suspect that this is the gravy that comes from jewel meat. Toriko feels the fat texture of the meat is like a finely carved sculpture, and the taste of the gravy is more fragrant than any other meat in the world. Toriko has just cut a piece of jewel meat when the gravy shoots out like fireworks. As soon as he eats it, he bursts into tears when he feels the sweetness of the gravy spreading all over his mouth. Not to mention that jewel meat also stimulates gourmet cells in his body. Starjun is now checking Kamatsu's bag to see if he can steal anything from him. Seeing that Kamatsu's knife is quite beautiful, he wants to take it. However, Kamatsu struggles to get the knife back because the kitchen knife is the life of a chef. Toriko suddenly returns here with a sleek body, much to Starjun's astonishment. He realizes that Toriko has gained strength after eating jewel meat. Starjun turns off the shock reduction mode to test Toriko's strength. That means that the damage Toriko deals will be transferred to Starjun's real body. Starjun lunges forward and punches Toriko hard, but he is still unharmed. Toriko uses a knife to cut off one of Starjun's arms with ease. Then, he continues to use the tenfold spiked punch to attack Starjun's body. After being hit by Toriko's punches, Starjun's robot explodes, but his real body is still safe despite being slightly injured. When Toriko goes to check on Rin, he is delighted to find that she is still alive. He takes jewel meat and everyone out of the mammoth's body. But Sunny only uses the net to catch the meat, causing Toriko to fall to the ground. Sunny then uses his hair to give Rin temporary first aid. Coco realizes that Toriko is the one who narrowly escaped the death god. Terry also manages to capture the lizard and take it to Toriko. 
The International Gourmet Organization releases the baby mammoth, but it seems that the mother mammoth is still feeling extremely angry, so Toriko and the others take the jewel meat and hurriedly run away. Rin is out of danger, and as soon as she regains consciousness, she asks to be Toriko's girlfriend, leaving them speechless.